Okay, let's start class. Today we will talk about the overall transformation kinetics uh, where the diffusion occurs during the transformation. Uh, we briefly handle the concept of the time temperature transformation diagram and the theoretical background uh, underlying uh, behind it. Okay, let's start with the simple one, the simple polite transformation. When we heat up the sample of <coughs> steel containing 0.77 carbon, then it at first it exists as austenite. So when we rap rapidly cool down the sample and hold at these temperatures, then austenite gradually transform into polite. And in particular, the polite will transform on along the austenite grain boundary. So when we measure the start of the transformation and the end of transformation, which means that the evolution of the polite, that is the fraction of the polite as a time at these temperatures, then we can obtain this kind of change of the volume fraction of the polite. When we repeatedly measure that kind of transformation behavior at different temperatures and then plot the starting point and the end point, then we can construct this kind of transformation curve. It say when the sample was cooled to these temperatures, about 600, then you can observe the start of the transformation about one second. And the transformation will finish about in 10 seconds. This is basic concept to construct the time temperature transformation diagram. And as you can see, when the temperatures close to the A1 temperature, it takes quite long time to observe <coughs> the start of the transformation. Why it takes long time as the temperature close to a1 temperatures. Why it takes a long time to start the transformation. Luckily speaking, around just below the A1 temperatures, the driving force for the transformation is very small, right? So with those kind of small driving force, it takes a long time to trigger, to initiate the transformation. Because as you know, the nucleation process depends on the available driving force for the transformation, right? So this is a typical time temperature transformation diagram or isothermal transformation diagram of the eutectoid steel. So when you look at these figures, if the holding temperature is around above 550, and you can see the polite transformation, right? But the holding temperature is low to the 550, then the transformation product will be bainite. And if you cool down the sample to such cooling rate that avoid the 
high temperature transformation product like perlite or bainite, then eventually you <coughs> can look, you can observe the martensite transformation. As you know, the martensite transformation is not associated with the diffusion process. So that's why the transformation line indicating the martensite transformation is horizontal line. So it does not take time. So as soon as we cool down the sample about these temperatures, the sample, the martensite transformation readily occur. So the 50% of austenite is already transformed to martensite. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, the curve gradually getting closer to eutectoid temperature when, we, when the holding time increase to this temperature. And similarly, when we decrease the holding temperatures, it also takes longer time to initiate the transformation. That's why the typical curves of the engineering steel has this C-type curve, and we call this temperature as a nose. So why, I already explained why this kind of behavior at higher temperature, but why? the similar behavior occurs at lower temperature. Sorry? Right. So this kind of transformation, perlite transformation or even vanitic transformation, some kind of diffusion is necessary. So when we cool down the sample at this lower temperature region, even though the driving force is sufficiently high, but the diffusion process is quite slow. So diffusion process control the overall transformation behavior. That's why we can observe these C-type curves in the uh, isothermal transformation curve. <coughs> Even though the time temperature transformation behavior of most of the engineering steel is, uh, was obtained using the exp experimental approach, but we can understand the transformation behavior, isothermal transformation behavior on the basis of the theoretical background. using the concept of nucleation and growth. Here, this is typical change of the transformation, <coughs> the fraction of transformation product. And it, at first, it takes time for the nucleation. And when the nucleation starts with the growth, it gradually, the fraction is gradually increased to finish the transformation. This kind of behavior can be analyzed with based on the nucleation and growth process, which have done by which have done by Abrami and Johnson Mel and to treat, to handle the isothermal transformation kinetics with the concept of nucleation and growth, we have to handle one problem, which is called impingement. Let's say, let's see, the nucleation and growth process at time interval 
tau and tau cross delta tau, the time interval tau, the nucleation process. At time tau, here, this is area represent the transformed phase. And this wide area is parent phase. During the time interval delta tau, there will be another additional nucleation event. But you have to remember the nucleation event at this or this area is forbidden because that area is already transformed into the product phase. So this kind of problem is called impingement. We have to handle this problem to evaluate the transform overall transformation kinetics using the concept of nucleation and growth. And Abrahami, Johnson, and Mo, and Kolmogorov simultaneously handles this kind of problem using the concept of extended volume. When we evaluate the extended volume, we do not care about the forbidden area. So we assume that repeated nucleation and growth can occur in the region which is already transformed to the product phase. What we have to do, then what we have to do is to relate the real volume and the extended volume. To evaluate extended volume is quite simple relative to the real volume, we, it, because we do not care about the impingement. So at first, to evaluate the extended volume and convert it into real volume using the relationship between them is convenient way to treat the isothermal transformation kinetics. So what will be the relationship between the real volume and the extended volume? Here is the relationship. <coughs> they drive that the increment of the real volume during certain time interval and the increment of extended volume at certain time interval, at the same time interval, we have to consider the possibility to find out untransformed reason for the nucleation event or growth event. So this term will be the probability to find untransformed region during the overall transformation. So the increment of the real volume is the product between 
product between the possibility to find out the untransformed region and the increment in the extended volume. Okay, so we, by using this relationship, we can convert the extended volume into the real volume to evaluate the transformed fraction, which means that transforms kinetics. Okay? So, when you integrate this relationship, you can obtain, actually integrate this. Then, can obtain. By integrating this, is it correct? I have to check my note. We are par. Right. So, with this relationship, you can drive this one. Where's my pen? So this is equivalent equation with this one. So now you can convert the extended volume into the real volume. Okay. Any question on the relationship between the extended volume and real volume? No? So using this one, let's try to evaluate the evolution of the volume fraction of the new phase. For the simplicity, we assume that constant nucleation rate and constant growth rate. and constant growth rate. And the nucleation start at T equal zero and it the nucleation process continue with constant nucleation rate during the transformation. Time t, the volume of the product phase which nucleate on time tau Would be given by this one. Right? Because 
when we assume the spherical spherical shape of the particle, the radius is given by this one. So this <coughs> is a volume of the particle which nucleate on at time tau. Okay. So when you consider the increment of the extended volume between the time interval that a tau this will be This term is the number of nucleus nucleate between this time interval. So this equation give you the increment of extended volume between time interval tau and tau plus d tau. The change of the extended volume during time interval d tau. Okay? So now we have the extended volume, so we can convert it into real volume using this relationship. So the change in real volume is given by this one. Right. Here V is overall volume of the system. <coughs> and this is exactly the same with this one. And by integrating both sides finally we can have this equation here psi is the <coughs> Alpha, which means the volume fraction of the product phase. <coughs> okay, the final form is that V alpha over V is one over exponential. So because we assume the constant growth rate and constant nucleation rate, this coefficient 
pi g q i v is a constant. So simply this can be written down with this one. So the evolution of the volume fraction of the transformed phase is proportional to the <coughs> exponential and the coefficient is 4. Usually when we analyze real transformation behavior by experiment and pit this kind of equation onto this experimentally determined line and evaluate the constant k and tn. Because here tn is appear because in general form, this value is not 4. Because here, this value is 4 because we assume constant nucleation rate and growth rate. But in typical condition, the nucleation rate and growth rate is not constant. So general form will be this one and plotting this function onto observed one, we can evaluate the k value and n value. And analysis of kn will give you some information on the characters of the transformation. So for example, n is depend on the nucleation and growth mechanism. Because we assume constant nucleation rate and growth rate, then we can have, we can obtain n equal 4. But sometimes <coughs> such kind of nucleation condition occurs, which is called site saturation. Site saturation means that as soon as we call, cool down the sample, all the available nucleation site is occupied by nucleus, which means all of the nucleation event occurs at t equal 0, it, that condition is called site saturation. At that condition, All of the nucleation occurs at <coughs> t equals 0. And the number of nucleation site is assumed the number of nucleation site is mv, then how will be the extended volume? The extended volume will be by this one, right? <coughs> because all of the nucleus appear at t equal 0. So the extended volume at t equal t is this is the volume of each nucleus. And this is the number, number of nucleus. So the product will, be, will give you the, all of the volume. 
which did not consider impingement. That is the concept of extended volume. So when you put this one into this one, the real volume will be by this one, so the value on exponent will be 3. Okay. So that's why n is 3 for the condition, the size saturation. Okay. So far, we handle one kind of product phase. Then how, we, how can we handle the situation where several product appears simultaneously, which is typical case, more usual case when we handle the precipitation. The rule, basic rule is the same. We evaluate the extended volume and convert it into real volume using the concept given by Abrami. And here we, let's see, there is two kind of product phase, alpha and beta. Then the probability to find out untransformed region should be modified with this one, right? This is alpha, V alpha, and V beta is all of the uh, volume of all of the product phase. And we can expand it, extend it, this one into the alpha, beta, gamma, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and so, and so on. So the problem is to evaluate extended volume of alpha and beta. When the product pay, number of product pays is more than two, it is very difficult to evaluate the, the extended volume in the closed form. So most of the case, we have to solve this situation, this problem, in numerical way. But in most case, we have to solve the V extended volume of alpha and extended volume of beta in numerical way. But in some times, when there is some relationship between alpha and beta, extended volume of alpha and beta, we can have closed form. We can obtain the closed form of alpha and beta. Let's say, at first,
let's assume that the extended volume of alpha and beta has this kind of linear relationship. Then this Vt total volume fraction of the product phase beta. And also we have a relationship of dVt and dV extended volume of total This is similar to the previous one. And when you assume the single phase, then the volume of overall phase should follow the same rule. And from this one, we can have T score one minus initial. Right. So when we put this value into this one, this V alpha plus V beta equals V T. So this is V T over V. So when we put this equation into that one, we have the V alpha equal exponential minus V over V. T, T, E, alpha. And this is the answer. T, E, alpha plus T, E, alpha. T, E, alpha. And then we integrate this equation to obtain V alpha.
with beta is here. So by integrating this term, we can evaluate the volume of the alpha. And for special case, when the condition of the size saturation, we already know that when the size saturation occurs, the E alpha goes. Square. When you put this value on this term, this value on this term, we can finally have. this close form. So usually when the number of product phase is more than two, it is not that easy to drive the close form for the volume fraction during the evolution of the volume fraction during the transformation. But in some special case, we can evaluate the course form for the evol evolution of the uh, product phase. So when we evaluate, when we obtain the course form for the volume of alpha, we can have the close form for the beta. So those kind of isothermal transformation behavior can be uh, theoretically have, have theoretical background. But in most of the case, in industrial application, those kind of uh, isothermal transformation hardly occurred. Because in most of the industrial line, the cooling occurs as continuous condition. So in industrial line, the isothermal transformation process is difficult to apply. So most of the industrial application, the transformation behavior in continuous cooling condition. Continuous cooling condition means that the cooling with the continuous, uh, with the constant cooling rate is more important than the transformation behavior at constant temperature. So sometimes we have to know the transformation behavior at constant cooling condition. Of course, most of the engineering alloy, we have those kind of diagrams which tell you what kind of transformation product can be obtained with certain cooling rate, which is called 
continuous cooling transformation diagram. And this is the typical example of the continuous cooling phase uh, transformation diagram. And this, each cooling curves indicate the specific cooling rate. So when you cool down the sample with this cooling rate, the final product will be final marker structure consists of ferrite. And from this diagram, you can see if you want to avoid the ferrite transformation during cooling, you have to cool the sample faster than this cooling rate. So even though most of the engineering alloy <coughs> have its own transformation, continuous transformation, continuous cooling transformation diagram, but sometimes you have to know, you want to know the transformation behavior on continuous cooling condition from the information of its isothermal transformation behavior. <coughs> the rule which is useful to convert isothermal transformation behavior into continuous, the transformation behavior during continuous cooling is called the additivity rule, which is proposed, first proposed by Shai. In additivity rule, if you cool down the sample with this cooling curve, then at first we assume that this cooling curve consists of series of isothermal holding. And the transformation with specific volume fraction, fraction occurs when this condition is satisfied. Here this condition is that time t is the time necessary to obtain this specific volume fraction. And delta time Ti is the holding time at that temperature. So this concept assumes for example, at these temperatures, at these temperatures, this amount of time is consumed to obtain this specific volume fraction of the product phase. So when the consumption accumulate and when it reaches to unit one, then actually we can have, we can observe this specific volume fraction. So by this way, you can obtain you can evaluate the transformation behavior on continuous cooling condition from the information on the isothermal transformation kinetics. This is called the additivity rule. Okay. Okay, this is the last slide I prepared today. And any question? <coughs> uh, 
Unfortunately, we do not have the most famous software to create, the, to obtain the CCT or TT diagram is the JMA Pro, but we do not have that one. Sorry? As far as I know, we do not have. No question? Okay, I will close today, today's class, and from next class, we will start the transformation behavior mechanism of the Martin site, and it will take about uh, six class. And with that, I will close the whole lectures on the uh, on, um, on the early of June. Okay, we have more six class. Okay, if no question, see you in next Tuesday.